All right, can I start right now? Yeah. All right, hi, everyone. My name is Min, and uh, I'm from Vietnam. I my business idea today is V Fashion. Um, so just getting started, let me uh, introduce a little bit about myself. So I was born in Islam, you know, uh, where I witnessed a lot of children getting exploited by their parents. The reason is because their families cannot generate like sufficient income to send the children to school. So they send the children to you know dangerous factories, construction sites to earn money. Uh, I myself, when I was a child, I got to work at a very young age, not because my parents made me to do that, but because, I mean, I got to support my families. Uh, otherwise, we don't have any income to survive. So with all of those experience, when I grow up, I, uh, I want to do something for the children in my home country. So that's why I come up with the idea today, the V Fashion. Uh, so let me define the problem, good ambassador problem, define it. So we do a secondary research. We based on uh, the World Bank Economic Development in Vietnam and Vietnam Industry Report, Education Report, and we were able to determine that around 1.75 million of Vietnamese children are laborers. They work for at least 42 hours per week, um, and you can see over here in the picture a boy is working in a, a mining fields. He doesn't have any protection, no helmet, or you know, no gloves, or any protection, no kind of insurance. And we also implement a primary research. So I spent my summer 2016, I do observation of around 85 families. Uh, we do focus group and we talk to around 280 respondents, the poor families in uh, the province of Vietnam. And we were able to determine that the minimum wages of people uh, are around $3.8 to $5 per day. And I also contact the local school and I was able to determine that the school tuition per child per day is gonna be uh, $3. So in sum that if you, uh, if you produce like $4 per day and the school tuition is $3, so it means that you gotta go into the target, like you're gonna earn at least like $7, $7 per day in order to send your child to school. So the V-Faction mission is to fill in that gap, the $3.3 per day, so that at the end those families have the income to send their children to school. So basically, the last summer, 2016, you know, I spend my time, I go into poor rural areas of Vietnam, I sleep with them, you know, I talk to them, eat with them, and I discover that those people, those families, they possess like a professional cleaning skills, but they only use that for family purposes. Like, they do that for their husband, their children, but they don't use that for business purposes. And my, my family, we got like 15 years of experience in textile industry, we are building up everything from nothing. So I try to think like, you know, I try to connect, how can I connect my skill with their skill to connect them to customer market to generate income. Um, so basically the solution is that I provide them employment opportunity to producing cleaning products. We collect those products and then we distribute those products to develop market. We're selling those for premium prices. And then at the end they have sufficient income to send the children to school. So basically here's the revenue model, very simple. We distribute the materials, number one, to the families. They produce the product in their own house, and then we collect those product number two, and then we distribute the product to develop market. We're selling them through two channels, the offline channels, department store, and the online channel through our website and on social media platform. So that's basically the revenue model. And I would like to talk about our products. So uh, we partner with a textile company, Hongson, and we implement a production testing. Uh, we do material testing, we do quality comparison, basically we produce a product and we compare like what customers think about that, how much are they willing to pay for that. We have 57 participants in that production testing. The criteria that we use is that like, how, how can we achieve the minimum order in developed market? How can we produce like 30,000 to 40,000 pieces per month? Uh, the number of products can we produce like per day, the number of flavors that we need. So that's how we do the production testing. And the result is that we come up with four um, basic type of product, the hat, the gloves, the scarf, and the sweaters. Um, we want to focus on the first three, the hat, the glove, and the scarf, because you know it costs less to produce and uh, less time to produce. And we're going to pay them based on the number, the number of products uh, produced, because we cannot keep track of how many hours they spend in their personal house. And here the picture you can see is actually the two parents, they produce a product, we do uh, production testing. And uh, in order to determine the, the price, the total cost and the selling price, we implement a secondary research. We compare the price in industry report in developed market. Uh, we also do the customer research. Basically, we determine how much customer willing to pay for each type of the product. We come to the total cost over here and also the selling price over here for every single type of product. So that's how we, t uh, that's how we determine the cost and the total price. So in sum, 
in order to generate $7 per day based on the production capacity and income generated per day, we provide a three following options. Like option one, a person can produce like a pair of clubs, a hat, half of a sweater per day, or a pair of clubs and a scarf per day. Like either of the three following options can come up with a generated income of $7 per day. So that's basically the impact that we create. So let me talk about our customer discovery. So the two methods we use is a focus group. We have like around seven to 12 participants in the US, and we also implement a survey. We got around 380 respondents in the US, um, and around 200 respondents in Vietnam. We got 80% offline, so basically what I do is that I go to the department stores in the US and in Vietnam, I talk to people, see that thing about the product, and 20% was online. And what we're looking for in the research is the shopping behaviors, the willingness to pay for the product, uh, what I think about social product that support the community, in the inside, you know, the com and then we compare them across like you know different sectors, like the nationalities, the genders, the ages. The criteria, the criteria that we use to pick the respondent, like the screening process, is that we determine the number of products they purchase when they go to department store or online stores, and the willingness to pay for the social product. What they think about social products? Uh, to simply put it simply, is that if you buy ten pieces of normal product, how many, how many of them should be social products? So that's the criteria that we use to pick the, uh, the people whom we survey. And uh, moving you know, uh, more, the shopping behavior that we determine, um, there's going to be a lot more rap, but to put it simply is that we're going to distribute through the online and offline store. But we're going to keep an eye on the social media selling because you know, like Facebook right now, you can book a fly ticket on Facebook, so we want to keep an eye on that. Uh, that's maybe you know, uh, another distribution channels. And for those people, we see that the way that they're giving the feedback and opinion is not through the online website or to the offline department store, but they do that through the mails and catalogs. So that's how we're gonna get the feedback and opinion from them. So that's basically from the conclusion from the shopping behavior. And we also ask them, um, what's gonna be your decision factors when you buy a social product? And there are four most important factors, transparency, convenience, quality, and price. And we determine that transparency is the most important factors. What it means is that if you pay for a piece of product, you would like to know exactly how the company used those money to support the community. You want to know exactly where does that money go into. So that's how we determine. And we, we also break the transparency down into you know, ages, nationality, men versus women. And the conclusion is that regardless of all of those factors, transparency still remains the most like, important factors. We also test for the uh, validity of the results of the transparency. It means that to whether to see whether it's just random numbers or whether transparency is actually a problem. So it's actually a problem, um, the decision factor when it comes to purchasings. And I want to introduce um, our customer persona, our customer profile. She's our representative for our market. She's 27 years old. She's married. She got two children. Um, she likes to spend an hour of shopping online, you know, and she would love to build a relationship and support her community. But her problem is that when she buys something, she would like to know exactly how she contributes to the community. Basically, how the company use her money, to whom she's giving support to. So that's the insight that we get from a customer persona. And to tackle that problem, we are determined to differentiate ourselves by create a personal brand tag. So what it means is that for every single product that we produce, we attach a brand tag that's gonna specify the name of the child, uh, the city where they live in, not the specific address, but the city where they live in, the message that they wanna send to the person who purchased the product. So for example, that child, she wanna be a doctor, she wanna cure cancer in the future, she needed the money to go to school. So by that, we create a personal connection with those families. And how do we make sure that the children go into school? What about if the parents generate income but they still keep the children staying at home. So the way that we resolve that problem is that we create connection with the local school. We say, here's our proposal. So for every, at the end of each month, you're gonna implement like, you know, the learning ability test so that you're testing you know, how the children is learning. So by that, we keep track of whether the parents actually send in their children to school. We actually contact two school and they uh, agree to our pro proposal. It's, good. it's going to be a win-win situation because the school is going to increase the profit from the number of children attending the school. We also contact the local government to ask for their support and keep track of the number of children, you know, the labor, children, um, the, the labor rate of the children, whether it's going to be reduced or not. So we ask for support from the government too. And our accomplishment is that we already produced 100, around 200 pieces of the product with a brand tag. We sell around 180 pieces of them in Vietnam. 
So we're testing the concept to see whether it's going to be feasible or not. So here's the parents that have the children in those, my home country uh, with the product that they produce. You can see there's men too. So basically they can produce the product with their own hand. So that's our accomplish. We also partnered with two textile manufacturing companies. Uh, we determined, so we got material providers, production training, and I have connection in uh, France and Britain. So we're going to implement personal, you know, uh, connection, sorry, customer research in those two countries in the future, in the next like two or three months, um, to see how the market over there is going to be feasible. And we determine our objective based on, you know, number of children can we approach by the end of next year, the school capacity, the income generated by next year, how many order can we achieve by the end of next year. And the objective that we come up is that we intend to increase the number of minimum wages from $7 to $8 per person per day. We're going to approach like 1,500 families within the uh, next two years. And we're going to uh, gonna providing access to education for around 2,200 children in Vietnam in my home country. And finally, you know, uh, I would like you guys to believe in me because we got 15 years of experience in the industry, textile industry. We know how to connect with retailers, vendors. We know how to get our stuff done. Uh, and you know, like I was here last year, I made it to the semi-final. I didn't have a lot of experience, but that summer I go back to my home country. I do a lot of homework, you know, I do a lot of testing. And I really believe in my concept. So uh, I would like you guys to believe in me so that, you know, together we can make a difference for the children uh, in the future. So that's my presentation. Thank you. That was great, man. Um, just so you know, Vietnam is the fastest growing, one of the fastest growing countries in APAC for Facebook. Mm -hmm. So you should definitely leverage Facebook to reach that market and pull and run e-com widgets and all that stuff. So you should definitely do that. Thank you. Um, I thought I was tracking this well. I just want to kind of connect some of the dots and, and maybe it would be helpful for those others here as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's a gap that you want to essentially create a fund of dollars that would help send kids to, to, to continue education, mm -hmm. and you're doing it through what seems to be like a distributed workforce model. Is that right? So, mm -hmm. so the everyday individual can create textiles on behalf of a brand or a company. Mm -hmm. Is that right? And yeah, because right. they're directly engaged, they're accruing the income. Mm -hmm. And is that the disruption that you're no longer using like a manufacturing like warehouse of laboring resources? You're creating a another pool of resources. Is that is that am I understanding that correctly? Uh, sorry, can you repeat that because I'm, I'm trying to get like um, yeah. So it would be helpful for me mm -hmm. if it's not. We should move on. Uh, if it's clear for everybody else, mm -hmm. exactly uh, like the the components of the production of the item, mm -hmm. and whether the workers mm -hmm. are just from a generic like warehouse, but they're getting more opportunity to create more, thus creating more revenue? Mm -hmm. Or is it a new, like you're providing jobs essentially for, for new people that are, that were not historically creating materials? Okay, so you mean the criteria that we pick the people who are gonna produce the product, do you understand it correctly? E, that's yes, not my- so it is new production. So these, are the, are the people creating the products people that have um, formerly created products mm -hmm. in manufacturing. Are these oh, new okay. people I see what you mean. Mm -hmm. that are making these products? Mm -hmm. Actually, I have uh, I prepared for that question over here. So uh, the way that we approach the families is that we based on the four following uh, factors: the income that they generate per day, their needing skills, whether they have that skills or not, or whether they have access to education to the children. And if they don't have the kneading skill, we can train them the basic skill because the product that we produce, we base on, we, uh, we focus on the basic product. We don't want to, you know, based on, we don't want to focus on, you know, fancy product because, yeah. So you're directly injecting an economy into families that need income. Like that's what, you're creating a new workforce. Yeah, that's, that's is, is that Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So are, is this more like a, are you familiar with Etsy? Like, you know, what Etsy.com is? I, I think I heard about that. But. Right. So mm -hmm. basically, it's like a, a web-based platform for anybody. It's kind of like the eBay for people who create specialized, uh, like, clothes or whatever, just any kind of uh, uh, handmade items, right? Mm -hmm. So is this what this is, but it's targeting the Vietnamese, uh, Vietnam, and the people there? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to – I'm having a hard time understanding, like, what the mission is of V-Fashion. Is it – I mean, I, I get that you want to help the kids, right, mm -hmm. get – Education, you're targeting the poor folks, but like, 
are you creating the clothes or are you creating the uh, marketplace. The, the marketplace or yeah, like what's you your like what's your primary? You I think yeah. we all just need a little bit of clarity as exactly we get the mission part, mm -hmm. but the it part, at least for me as well, is a little bit unclear. Like the, pro the product that's being generated. Is it like then? sustainable fabric made by people in villages in Vietnam and you're taking this special fabric to make clothes which is you know, using a new workforce or um, are you just creating clothes and employing people who wouldn't have normally created clothes before and you're training them how to do that and a percentage of the sales goes to build schools. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I believe that's going to be the second way that you're talking about. So basically, we connect with materials provider. We provide them the materials mm -hmm. to produce the product. They produce the product in their own house. And then we oh, collect... In their own house. In their own house. Yes. Okay. So it's Got a distributed it. workforce model. I think yeah, the question yeah. Amit is asking, is it a, like the item that's being held up, mm -hmm. is that for a brand? That? Or is that a, the own family is creating oh, that's their own products? Oh, that's going to be for our brand. And oh, so your brand. Okay, yeah. so you're the front. You're like, you're like the Walmart. Mm -hmm. The production is happening through these new households, households that mm -hmm. need income, mm -hmm. um, and you're training them for knitting skills and all that other stuff. So you are the point of sale. Maybe That's someone right. would okay. apply for like a, question, right? a, a, a well, kit, right? Yeah. And you would mm -hmm. send. Sell yeah. they, right, no, 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 I'm just, I'm just saying, like, they're the actual <laughs> transactional. So, part. so all the clothes that you make, hats, scarves, it's the label is V Fashion, but mm -hmm. you're providing the infrastructure. Right. That's to right. create the jobs and provide mm -hmm. the education right. and all those kind of things. That's right. Things. And the and like distributed workforce right. model enabling income. And you could be selling these clothes to Walmart or Kmart. I already contacted Walmart and right. Target, but it seems very unlikely they're going right. to collect, you know, um, distribute those type of product. Yeah. So it would be selling directly through your website then? Is that no, there are two channels. So we contact uh, two different, uh, three different um, similar platforms. Mm -hmm. That's going to be potential partner that we're going to distribute a product through those department stores. The second way of distribution is going to be through our online websites. So that's okay. going to be two channels. Okay. So the question really here is how successful is V clothing or V fashion? Because if V fashion doesn't have, so you've been in business for 15 years. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the size and scale of V fashion. Um, because so that needs to succeed in order for there to be value back to these workers, right? Mm -hmm. So in terms of scaling, uh, where is that? Uh, or like, is it a big business? Like just, you guys have been in, like, do you guys sell a lot of inventory? Mm -hmm. All right, so let me talk about the scaling. Okay. Okay. So uh, for the scaling, you know, I, we intend to, you know, we rent like a small manufacturing houses in each of the, you know, areas that we approach. And in those houses, we're going to place like knitting machines. Man, so that's I'm sorry, I'm going to pause you. I get this answer. Okay. The question that I have is all of these new workers mm -hmm. are creating products for V Fashion. Yeah. That's if true. V Fashion doesn't sell the products, mm -hmm. these homes will not make the extra income. Mm -hmm. Right. So the question is, how successful is V Fashion, and mm -hmm. is it a stable business? Do mm -hmm. you guys have annual sales? Do you guys have distribution wholesale partners, mm -hmm. et cetera? Just to clarify one thing, I, let me see. You said you had 15 years of business experience. This hasn't been going for 15 years, right? V Fashion seems like it's been around. Like it's a family no, business. No, no, that's my family that's business. Family's business. So oh, they've been in business for 15 around. years. Yeah. Oh. So okay. they're basically leveraging this the new resource pool as like the warehouse workers to create the materials, so which is why the question I have is, yeah, of, if it's successful, then this is, mm -hmm. this is really interesting. Mm -hmm. oh. So tell us more about this 15 years of business experience, okay. you know, in terms of your contacts, your sales and revenues. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically my parents, we're building up from nothing, you know, like beginning, we got a very small manufacturing houses. Yeah. We go into materials. We are. Uh, we hire a very small amount of workforce, and they produce a product. But then later, we got connection to big retailers right. in Vietnam, the biggest one. And then we continue. We you know we are we contact you know like banks, and then we get more money fundings. Yeah. And then we, then we build up like, like you know a big manufacturing houses, you know where we uh, produce like a lot of more products. I'm sorry, in the interest of time, can you just cut to the revenues? Like, how are you much guys revenue? doing three million in revenue? Are you doing less than ten million? More than ten million? Like about like three million. I believe. Three million in yeah. sales. Okay. Yeah. Is that growing? Is that like consistently growing? Yeah, we are growing right now. Okay. I mean, that, that in essence is, yeah. yeah. Uh, Any more questions? I guess one more really quick. 
Have you thought as you as you grow on the digital side, so Facebook mm. and online, have you thought to make the tag that's physical right now online so that when I buy the product, I can mm -hmm. look online to follow their story or look at their profile? Yeah, that's what I intend to do is that we kind of build up a profile at customers. But it's kind of a little bit complicated because when you grow in a business to a lot more like thousand of, you know, um, producers, like families, it's kind of difficult to keep track of that online. Sure. Yeah. But I'm thinking about that. You know, but that could be a differentiator mm -hmm. to actually track all the people that are making the products mm -hmm. if you can do it. Yeah. Awesome. Cool.